one and only Ivan from page 82 to 96. Stella and Ruby. All morning, Stella strokes Ruby, pats her, smells her. They flap their ears, they rumble and roar, they sway as if they're dancing. Ruby clings to Stella's tail. She slips under Stella's belly. Sometimes they just lean into each other, their trunks twirl together like jungle vines. Stella looks so happy. It's more fun to watch than any nature show I've ever seen on TV. Home of the one and only Ivan. George and Mac are out by the highway. I can see them through one of my windows. They are next to each other on tall wooden ladders, leaning against the billboard that tells the cars to stop and visit the one and only Ivan, Mighty Silverback. George has a bucket and a long-handled broom. Mac has pieces of paper. He slaps one against the billboard. George dips the broom into the bucket. He wets the paper with the liquid from the bucket, and somehow the paper stays in place. They put up many pieces before they are done. When they climb down from the ladders, I see that they've added a picture of a little elephant to the billboard. The elephant has a lopsided smile. She's wearing a red hat, and her tail curls like a pig's. She doesn't look like Ruby. She doesn't even look like an elephant. I have only known Ruby one day, and I could have drawn her better. Art lesson. Ruby asks a lot of questions. She says, Ivan, why is your tummy so big? And, have you ever seen a green giraffe? And, can you get me one of those pink clouds that the humans are eating? When Ruby asks, what is that on your wall? I explain that it's a jungle. She says the flowers have no scent, and the waterfall has no water, and the trees have no roots. I am aware of that, I say. It's art, a picture made with paint. Do you know how to make art? Ruby asks. Yes, I do, I say, and I puff up my chest just a little. I've always been an artist. I love drawing. Why do you love it? Ruby asks. I pause. I've never talked to anyone about this before. When I'm drawing a picture, I feel quiet inside. Ruby frowns. Quiet is boring. Not always. Ruby scratches the back of her neck with her trunk. What do you draw, anyway? Bananas, mostly. Things in my domain. My drawings sell at the gift store for $25 a piece, with a frame. What's a frame? Ruby asks. What's a dollar? What's a gift store? I close my eyes. I'm a little sleepy, Ruby. Have you ever driven a truck? Ruby asks. I don't answer. Ivan? Ruby asks. Can Bob fly? A memory flashes past, surprising me. I think of my father, snoring peacefully under the sun while I try every trick I know to wake him. Perhaps, I realize, he wasn't really such a sound sleeper after all. Treat. How's that foot, old girl? George asks Stella. Stella pokes her trunk between the bars. She inspects George's right pocket, shirt pocket for the treat he brings her every night without fail. George doesn't always bring me treats. Stella's his favorite, but I don't mind. She's my favorite, too. Stella sees that George's pocket is empty. She gives George a frustrated nudge with her trunk, and Julia giggles. Stella moves to George's left pocket and discovers a carrot. Nimbly, she removes it. Mac walks past. Toilet's plugged up in the men's room. Men's bathroom, he says. Big mess. I'll take care of it, George sighs. Mac turns to leave. Um, before you go, Max, George says, you might want to take a look at Stella's foot. I think it's infected again. Darn thing never does heal upright, Mac rubs his eyes. I'll keep an eye on it. Money's tight, though. Can't be calling the vet every time she sneezes. George strokes Stella's trunk. She inspects his pockets one more time, just in case. Sorry, girl, George says as he watches Mac walk away. Elephant jokes. Ivan, Bob, I blink. The dawn sky is a smudge of gray flecked with pink, like a picture drawn with two crayons. I can just make out Ruby in the shadows, waving hello with her trunk. Are you awake? Ruby asks. We are now, says Bob. And Stella's still asleep, and I don't want to wake her, because she said her foot was hurting, but I'm really, really, Ruby pauses for a breath, really bored. Bob opens one eye. You know what I do when I'm bored? What? Ruby asks eagerly. Bob closes his eye. I sleep. It's a little early, Ruby, I say. I'm used to getting up early. Ruby wraps her trunk around one of the bars on her door. At my old circus, we always got up when it was still dark, and then we had breakfast, and we walked in a circle, and then they chained my feet up, and that really hurt. Ruby falls silent. Instantly, Bob is snoring. Ivan, Ruby asks, do you know any jokes? I especially like jokes about elephants. Um, well, let me see. I heard Mac tell one once, I yawn. Um... How can you tell that an elephant has been in the refrigerator? How? By the footprints in the butter. 
Ruby doesn't react. I sit up on my elbows, trying not to disturb Bob. Get it? What's a refrigerator? Ruby asks. It's a human thing, a cold box with a door. They put food inside. They put food in the door or food in the box. And is it a big box, Ruby asks, or a little box? I can see this is going to take a while, so I sit up all the way. Bob slides off, grumbling. I reach for my pencil, the one I snapped in half with my teeth. Here, I say, I'll draw you a picture of one. In the dim light, it takes me a minute to find a piece of, find the piece. <sighs> I'm sorry. In the dim light, it takes me a minute to find a piece of the paper Julia gave me. The page is a little damp and has a smear of something orange on it. I think it's from a tangerine. I try my best to make a refrigerator. The broken pencil is not cooperating, but I do what I can. By the time I'm done, the first streaks of morning sun have appeared in flashy cartoon colors. I hold up my picture for Ruby to see. She studies it intently, her head turned so that one black eye is trained on my drawing. Wow, you made that? Is this the thing you were telling me about before? Art? Sure is. I can draw all kinds of things. I'm especially good at fruit. Could you draw a banana right now? Ruby asks. Absolutely. I turn the paper over and sketch. Wow, Ruby says again in an odd voice when I hold up the page. It looks good enough to eat. She makes a happy lilting sound, an elephant laugh. It's like the song of a bird I recall from long ago, a tiny yellow bird with a voice like dancing water. Strange. I'd forgotten all about that bird, how she'd wake me every morning at dawn while I was still curled safely in my mother's nest. It's a good feeling making Ruby laugh, so I draw another picture, and another, along the edges of the paper. An orange, a candy bar, a carrot. What are you two up to? Stella asks, moaning as she tries to move her sore foot. How are you this morning? I ask. Just feeling my age, Stella says. I'm fine. Ivan is making me pictures, Ruby says, and he told me a joke. I really like Ivan, Aunt Stella. Stella winks at me. Me too, she says. Ivan, want to hear my favorite joke? Ruby asks. I heard it from Maggie. She was one of the giraffes in my old circus. Sure, I say. It goes like this. Ruby clears her throat. What do elephants have that nothing else has? Trunks, I think. But I don't answer because I don't want to ruin Ruby's fun. I don't know, Ruby, I reply. What do elephants have that nobody, nothing else has? Baby elephants, Ruby says. Good one, Ruby, I say, watching Stella stroke Ruby's back with her trunk. Good one, Stella says softly.